guys, it's Alex VA, uh, and welcome to another video. So, the poll, um, that I did, uh, Jeff the Killer won, um, so, yeah, this is most likely gonna turn into a series because I kind of have, like, like this story that I want to do. Um, quick, like, disclaimer, I'm going after, uh, the comic, like, the way Jeff acts in this, uh, is off the comic, uh, I eat pasta for breakfast, uh, which is basically a story about Lazari and how she came into the, you know, whole, um, mansion and stuff. So, that's kind of what I'm going off of. So, yes, Jeff is going to be calling Slenderman Slendy and is going to absolutely hate Ben and, uh, Masky and, like, all of those characters and Eilis Jack and everything. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, this is going to be about a day before you meet them. Oh, and trigger warning before we start. Um, cannibalism. <laughs> yes, this one's going to have cannibalism. Uh, murder, blood, uh, murder of relatives or family. Uh, if you're, like, not okay with that, please click off. Uh, did I say mentions of blood? Okay, fine. If I didn't mentions of blood, if I did, here's an extra thing. Uh knives, you know, just all this murder type stuff. So yeah, let's get into it. You sat in your bed as you stared up into the ceiling, that overcoming hunger that you've been having for a few weeks. You didn't know exactly what it was, but you needed it. You had a feeling you knew what it was. Human flesh, but you weren't sex. You walked out of your room, and it was about midnight. You walked over to the sink where you grabbed a glass and filled it up with water and started drinking it. You started to go down your throat, but you spit it back up. Your body wouldn't take it. You tried again, but this time it spit up with even more force that you fell to the ground in pain. What the hell is happening, you thought. You got up quickly and went to the fridge where you grabbed a orange, peeled it, and took a slice, put it in your mouth, swallowed it, and waited a few. After about a minute, you were hunched over the sink, throwing up. What's going on? You thought in your head, as you looked at your hands as they were shaking violently. You felt your face to make sure you were still alive, pinched yourself, and to make sure it wasn't a dream. Then that hunger came back, but it was stronger than ever. You knew exactly what it was. You couldn't overcome it anymore. You had to. You grabbed a knife as you started to walk to your parents' room. You opened the door, just a little bit of light shining through, hitting on your mother's face, your father next to her. You walked over, knife in hand, as you rose it over your mom's head. You hesitated at first, but then came down, killing her instantly. You had hit the bed with enough force to shake it, which woke up your father. After he saw what you had done, he tried to lunge at you. But you stabbed him in the chest before he could. You sat there staring at their bodies when you heard a little cry come from the door. You looked over and you saw your brother, who was only three years old, standing there. He kept saying your name over and over again. Listener, listener, is, is mom okay? Is, is, is that blood? You looked at him unfazed, so you took the knife and brought it up to his neck. He looked at you as he spoke the words, say anything and I'll cut your neck. Of course, though, he screamed and you slid it, his vocal cords being the first thing to shut down. As he fell to the floor, you saw as his body twitched. You smiled and laughed a bit and then plunged your knife right above his heart, took your knife 
and slid it downwards, making sure not to destroy the heart. He pulled it out, and it was beating, surprisingly. You looked at it as something in your head told you to bite it, eat it, anything, just stop the hunger. So you did. You bit it, and God, were you satisfied. You looked back at your mom and your dad. You walked down the trail with an aisle of trees around you. You did it. You killed and ate them. How could you? You thought. You were walking until you heard a crunch sound and the knife that was in your pocket came out. You screamed into the darkness telling them, or whoever the person was, that if they wanted to come out and kill them. There was no answer. You stayed there a little bit longer and you started walking again. You walked and walked until you heard it again. This time it was closer. Someone had to be playing with you, or at least you thought they had to. You turned around again, this time revealing the knife and saying, Come out. Stop being a pussy. Finally, the man showed himself. He was tall. Probably seven or eight feet. He was dressed nicely for someone to be in the woods. But you didn't care. I mean, you literally just murdered your entire family and ate them. So why would you care? The man's- the weird thing about the man is that his face is white. There was no face to be there, really. Well, actually, there wasn't. He was just a white head with a very nicely dressed man body. Something told you not to hurt him. He seemed like a friend. Not, well, in this case, food. He looked at you, not even wincing at the blood that was dripping down your mouth and the heart you held in your other hand. He just looked at you and then held out his hand. Take it, your mind said. And so you listened. And you followed him back to him this mansion that was huge. You walked in to be greeted by many people of gender and age. You noticed this one guy on the couch. He looked to be around your age. He was sitting on the couch next to a guy with what looked to be elf ears. His eyes were all black and he had what looked to be some weird like head thing. It reminded you of Link from Legend of Zelda. The man that you were currently staring at had his mouth cut into a permanent smile. His hair was black and his skin was burned or looked like it had been bleached probably. You didn't pay much attention, but until the other man that took you and started to speak. Welcome to my mansion, listener. Listener? How did he know my name? And how the hell can he talk? You thought. I mean, he doesn't have a mouth, right? You kind of just brushed it off and you looked at him. Hmm? How do I know your name? I know everybody's name when something bad happens. I knew your name even before it happened. I knew it a couple weeks before it did this even. Your breath kind of caught in your throat. You thought that's when the hunger started. He looked at you and said, when what hunger started? You looked at him and he started telling him the truth. 
about everything. When you had this hunger and you had no idea where it was coming from, you didn't know what the hell was going on. What happened when you drank that water, when the first time you drank that water and you just spit it back up, the second time you threw it up and when you ate the orange and then later you threw it up. Then how you killed your entire family and ate their remains. The only thing left was your father's heart. It was the only one that actually fought back. You saved it because you knew there was something special. He looked at you. Everyone else in the room went quiet. Tell the man that you were staring at earlier, piped up. Sunday, why the hell do we have this freak here with us? Jeff, listen. You killed your entire family too and went on a murder spree. You're lucky they only killed their family. Whatever, they ate them. That's cannibalism. So what? You have your weird little freaking things in your mind? Really, Sunday? Yes, Jeff. Now will you pipe down so I can introduce everyone to them? Whatever. This guy, which you presumed his name was Slendy, or it was at least some type of nickname, had called out into the mansion a couple more names, most of them sounding like female names, as more people walk downstairs. Obviously almost surprised by your by you. A little girl piped up. Mr. Sunny Man, who's this? Oh sweet Lazari. This is listener. They're gonna live with us. Oh okay. They're so pretty. I know, right. We got another one. Hi, I'm Lulu. You must be listener, right? Nice to meet you. Huh? Oh, my eyes? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, of course. Hey, I'm Jane. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. No one gives a fuck, Jane. Shut up, Jeff! I haven't killed him yet, because I promised Slendy I wouldn't. And don't forget, if you do, yes, you'll tear me into a million pieces. If you want to survive, stay near us. You watched as another girl came up to you. Her mouth was slit like Jeff's, and she had this perky walk to her, but as she neared you, Jeff almost scoffed like he hated her. Hi, I'm Nina. Nice to meet you. You looked at her. You know, you're really pretty, although a permanent smile would be nice sometimes. You're too gloomy. You looked at her. A permanent what, you said? Smile. I mean, sure, you might have killed your family, but... A smile wouldn't hurt, right? You looked at her as your face started to contort into a disgusted look, and then you heard Jeff laugh. <laughs> Nina, leave them alone. They just got here. We're not cutting people up. Oh, but Jeff, please. Nina, stop giving me that voice like we're fucking dating. We're not. The room was silent for a bit until the lady that you had just met, Jane, said something. Don't be a prick, Jeff. Now I wish I murdered you too. Oh, shut up. You know I would have come back to murder you. You two, you need to be quiet before I send you both to isolation. They both shut up. Sorry about that. As you've heard, Lazari and Jeff had called me one of my names. One of them I actually like. Jeff. Quit calling me Slendy. Whatever you say, Slendy. I'm Slenderman. You can come up with that any nickname you want. Just please do not call me Slendy. Oh, come on, Slendy. It's already coming to the 
freaking house already. Just live up to it. Then you're not helping. What are you talking about, Slendy? Not you too, Jack. Oh. <laughs> Slenderman walked off as he was pretending to cry and slammed his room door shut. Now you're in a room full of murderers and much crazy people. Well, who's going to show me to my room? You said. Well, I am living here now, right? Mr. Slendy Man, or whatever the hell you guys call him, said that he knew about me, so obviously he had to have a room for me. Where is it? Jane walked up to you and said, You're right next to Jeff. Fuck, he thought. Of course, of course I'm right next to the most egotistical, emo-looking fucking dude out there. Great. And I think it's only fair that because you're next to Jeff. Jeff? Really? Yes, show them to their room. Fuck you. How many times do I have to tell you this, Jeff? I'm not interested. You can me, though? What the fuck, Nina? You are a literal fangirl that I absolutely hate. I don't even know how you came in here. <sighs> well, the newcomer's lucky. I wanted the room next to yours. Whatever. Come on. Let's go. I don't want to be here with these fucktards anymore. What was that? That girl that asked to fuck me? That's Nina. She's some fangirl I met one day when I, uh, well, I can't explain. It was Valentine's Day, I believe, and I was out with her, and we decided to go and kill every single person inside of a restaurant, so we did. I was in love with her at first, but then quickly fell out of love after I realized we weren't as the same as we thought. She did it. She did exactly what I did to my family and friends, to her family and friends, so she could be identical to me. And now I have no interest in her, and she's been like this ever since, so. Yeah, basically she's a stalker uh, for a serial killer. Anyways, here's your room. My room's over there. I do play music. It does get loud. No, I'm not turning it down. Now, go into your room and make yourself at home or something. We'll go back to your place and plan it like you got murdered. I mean, yeah, we'll just plan it like the way you killed your parents. You got murdered and someone ate your insides. Nobody wants to mess with a cannibal. Trust me. We've had people like that here. And it works every time. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Present time... You woke up, hunger filling your stomach. No, no, not this again. I can't. I fucking can't. But I'm so hungry. I need something to eat. You walk downstairs trying to find anything. Maybe an arm that somebody left, or a leg, or a foot, or maybe they have something in the fridge, but when you opened it, it was all human food. Fuck, you thought. When you turned around, you saw Slenderman there. He was holding what looked to be a child's arm. He held it out to you as you quickly grabbed it and munched on it, finishing it in about five minutes. You full yet, listener? Yeah. You don't remember much after that, it just went dark, but when you woke up, Next morning, you woke up in your bed. 
You were perfectly fine, the hunger was gone, and you felt normal. You walked out where you saw Jeff, who you assumed was Jack, Ben, and Nina. Nina was super close to Jeff, and for some reason it bothered you. You thought in your head, she's too close. He can't be near her. No one can be near him. She can't be near him. No one can be near him. Get her away. Eat her. Kill her. Anything. Just get her away from him. You back the thoughts down as you walked over and sat down on the recliner and reached for your phone. What? It, it's gone. You just had it last night, though. Looking for this, Jeff reached into his pocket as he pulled out your phone. Whoa, 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 slow down the cussing, dude. Slendy told me to take it, delete all the contacts off of your phone so you don't have them. Here, it's... There's it back, I don't want it. You took it as you went through. All of your social media was still there, but when you went to the contacts, you only saw a few numbers. Slendy's, Jeff's, Eilis Jack's, and James. You can get more today if you want, just don't... I don't know, don't fucking call me when you are bored or something. Jack got a- or Jack. Jeff got up as he started to walk upstairs up to his room as Nina followed. Only to be proceeded with a yelling Jeff and a scared Nina running down the stairs. Something about threatening to kill her if he came or if she came close to him one more time. You didn't really quite pay attention to what he said. All you know is it was really bad. You grabbed your phone as you walked back upstairs, not wanting to conversate with the people quite yet. You walked to your door and opened it, closed it, and put your head or put your back against the door as you breathed. When you opened your eyes, you were not met with your one single bed and white blank walls. You were met with a room that was painted a blackish red color a, be a bed with an entire entire bed set on it and a shirtless Jeff working on a speaker your face turned red really fucking red and that's when you have the hunger again Shit, you thought. Your mouth started to drool. What the hell was going on? You already fed. You, you don't, you don't need this. What is going on? You put your mouth or your hand over your mouth to try and stop the drool coming out and to stop, try or to to black out the sound of your heavy breathing. You were paralyzed. If he turned around, you were you were definitely gonna strike. You you needed to bound yourself somehow. You couldn't you couldn't go after him. You didn't want to take a chance of getting torn apart or whatever. You needed to find a way. You saw the you saw a belt on the ground. You quickly grabbed it grabbed it before Jeff could turn around and you tied yourself to his door. As, right when he turned around, your hand came off your mouth and you lunged. Luckily, the belt was strong enough to grab you as you stood there, the hunger getting even worse. Jeff saw a little bit of blood from your uh, black jacket as he ran up to you and grabbed your hand, put his hand over your throat so or you're like his arm over your throat and grabbed the heart out of your jacket 
your mouth was open and you were trying to lunge at him when he shoved the heart in and you ate. You passed out again and you woke up in Jeff's bed. What the hell happened? You asked. You tried killing me, that's what. You looked at him as he was turned around, his music blasting. That's when you remember. You started to apologize over and over again. He walked up to you and put his hand over your mouth. You're fine. You don't need to fucking apologize. He looked at his arm. There was a bandage. Did you fucking bite him? You thought. Don't mind this. I did it to calm you down. It's just a cut. What? You thought? If you really want to know, the heart that I fed you was not enough. So I gave you some of my blood. He sat at the end of the bed as you sat up. Or he sat at the end of your bed as you sat up. Or at the end of his bed. Fuck. He sat at the end of his bed as you sat up. He took his hand to go check your temperature as he flinched back a little bit. So you realized what he was doing, you pulled back and let him do it. Your fever has gone down, luckily. How much have you eaten in the past couple weeks since the hunger has started? You've only eaten three meals? Three thi things. You've only eaten three things. And what was that? The heart. You can't just survive off of hearts. You need. If you can't eat human food, you're going to need to eat something else. On the human. You can't just eat the heart. Whatever, because this you need to start getting into a healthy diet too. Which means you're going to be killing a lot. So I hope you enjoy killing. He watched as he got up and started to walk towards his door. He ran up to him, grabbing his arm and told him never to do whatever the fuck he did that and if you went like that again just knock you the fuck out and put you back in your bed and then go tell Slenderman what happened and he would help Jeff just looked at you probably totally ignoring what you said took your hand and led you to your room where he proceeded to lay you down and told you to get some rest. You still had a little bit of a fever, but it had gone down, so you still needed to rest. Last thing you saw was Jeff's back walking out of the room as you drifted off to sleep. Alright, and that's going to be the end. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I am going to make a part two to this, so yeah. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome Instagram morning, day, or night. Bye-bye.